What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the brand new grid and column modifier APIs for Swift UI from Dubdub 2022. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below if you're new here, hit subscribe as well. Let's open up Xcode 14 beta, create a new project and talk about some grids. So today we'll stick with the iOS tab and app template. Let's creatively call this project grid demo because what's a more creative name? Make sure your language is set to Swift and interface, of course, Swift UI. I'll continue and toss it onto my desktop. Now, first things first, make sure your preview loads up on the right hand side since we are going to be using it, of course, to see what the heck we're doing. And let's uh, delete all the starter code here and talk about some grids. Let me actually close this left panel as well and bump up the font size here. And let's create a grid really simply by creating a grid. Now, this is slightly different from the lazy grid and v-grid and horizontal grids that we have already. This new grid API, along with grid rows and column modifiers, allows us to create more flexible grids. And it's built on the back of the uh, layout protocol that we also got that allows us to create really elaborate layouts. And that'll be an upcoming video. So let's, uh, let's do some basic stuff to see this in action. So I'm going to create another uh, view here, and I'll just call it Rect for simplicity. And this will have a body in it, which will be some view. And we are simply going to return a rectangle, super creative, I know. And uh, we'll give this guy perhaps a fill color of color dot blue, uh, just like that. Now on this grid, I am going to add a tad bit of padding, and let's start creating a what we call a grid row. So as you can imagine, a grid row is simply a row of elements, and we're going to toss a couple recs inside of here. We've got three in this case, and you can see that they have proportionally been distributed horizontally, where each one is one third, and they're taking up the entire vertical space of this grid. Now, to take a quick pause here, for those of you who are somewhat or even minimally familiar with HTML or the Flexbox model that is very popular on the web, things like Bootstrap with uh, CSS, you'll feel very comfortable using this new grid API. And if you're not familiar with it, it's really simple and powerful. So the concept of this is that each of your columns in a particular row is weighted. In this case, each one is one third, 33%. Now, if I copy this row, let's say two more times, we'll see here that now each of the rows is also 33% of its container in its uh, vertical axis as well as horizontal. And the beauty and power of this is this allows us to provide column counts which are synonymous with weights. For example, let's say I get rid of the third rect in the first row, you'll see that SwiftUI has decided to make each of these one third on the right hand side. But maybe I want them to be 50% the width just in this first row. So what I can actually go ahead and do is I can specify specific numbers of columns. So I can say here our grid column, I believe is what it's called. Let's start with one actually. Let's do grid column here. And let's actually start with just one of these. Let's say I just want one and I want it to take up the entire width up here. We can go ahead and actually do that. Now, of course, let's say we want this to be two thirds and we want another one here next to it to be one third. We can do that as well. And actually, when I was first playing with this, one thing that I realized is that this is incredibly powerful to create, you know, very complex collection view like layouts, which in UI kit would be really verbose and kind of a pain to build out. Now grids are loaded statically. So there is a performance cost So just be mindful of that. I haven't actually tried if percentage based splits are allowed here. I don't believe they are. So you do have to stick with a whole number. So if you do end up wanting to make it, you know, even you got to play with the numbers and make sure your grids and columns match accordingly. But one thing that you certainly can do, I believe, is you can specify grid alignments. Now, I haven't actually used grid alignments myself, but we can take a look at this here. And let's say we create this one up here, which is this one and pop this on. What I would have expected to happen is to center this, but perhaps that modifier I am not using correctly since this is new to me as well. So this is pretty interesting, but let's take it one step further. Now within a grid, just because it's a, you know, grid doesn't mean we can't put other stuff in here. So let me actually take this and we'll make this three. And up here, let's say I wanna create a heading and maybe say this is SwiftUI grids, or I should say SwiftUI for a grid. 
And let's say I want to give it a title here. Let me just bold this. And let's provide a background color on this guy. So I'm looking for just background. And we'll do color. Dot, let's do purple here. You'll see that we've got a title up here, and it's actually not aligned to any of these grid rows. It's not actually floated off to the left uh, in the case of if we use columns here. So my point here is you can actually use these other types of views inside of your grids. You're not constrained to having to compose these together, making your life a whole lot more flexible. And the last thing I'm going to cover really quickly here is the fact that you can actually um, you can actually mix and match all this stuff together. So let's actually make this one here be a one. And then in this case, we're going to make this one be it's getting ahead of myself. Let's copy and paste this here and here. Line break that line break that I'll make this one here be um, three, perhaps. And here we will do uh, one and you'll see in this uh, row now we now have things weighted by four and the reason for this is the fact that We said three here for this particular rect and we still have one more to show So what Swift UI has computed is the fact that we need at least four columns to fit everything and you can actually keep increasing this Let's try ten and you'll see we now have this split into eleven sections so the one thing that's a little annoying is the fact that all of your other adjacent rows will update with the you know maximum number of columns that are needed. But the easiest fix for that is to just update your grid columns. So you can make some pretty intricate UIs. You will need to maintain state in terms of how many columns you have. But imagine creating a table on a iOS app since uh, iPadOS does have an actual table component with columns and rows. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Pretty short video. I wanted to show this new API in action if you haven't seen it or used it yet. Definitely looking forward to making a much longer in-depth video about custom layouts with the layout protocol that was also introduced. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Hit subscribe before clicking away if you're new here and into iOS. Comment and let me know if you're into SwiftUI, iOS. Let's connect on LinkedIn, all the socials, Twitter. You guys know the drill. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.